And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be going all around the world, all the way from Africa to the Amazon, to Mount Everest, to China. Well, not really, because actually we're gonna be pretending to go to those places, but we're really just staying around London, going to different spots, and bringing stuff back to tell our stories about these great artifacts that we found and different things we did all around the world, even though we never left. This is about coming back to London and telling people an adventure and a bunch of stuff and nonsense. This is a game from Cheap Ass Games. It's two to six players, plays in about 30 to 40 minutes. It is a light but fun thematic little game here. Let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Here we have stuff and nonsense set up. We've got three players playing. We have the board set up that happens kind of randomly. The board set up using different cards at different places. We're gonna be going to different places, finding things, and then bringing them back to the Adventures Club to lie about where we've been around the world even though we never left London. We could be going to the newsstand and gathering facts or the antique shop to get artifacts, the junk shop to get specimens, the gift shop to get photos, the cafe to get anecdotes, the pub to get heroes, or the market to trade some of our stuff, or finally the Adventures Club to go on and tell everybody about your adventure. So where these cards are on the board don't really matter, it's randomly set up. We randomly have eight cards that are drawn and put with the corresponding color is the easiest way to see. There's also symbols as well. We also have Professor Elemental that ends up being in a random spot as well. So on your turn, now notice that this is sort of a wheel. So on your turn, you're gonna be able to move one spot or stay, and then you can grab something from that spot if you want. So now see how this is a wheel from, from the middle here. Think of these two as the middle, but they're still separated from one move. So if I wanted to go here, that's one move. Uh, from the middle, I can go pretty much to anywhere. So I could go here or I could even go here on my turn. On the next turn, I could go here, over to here, or any of these cards in the middle. So again, each of these cards are sort of one way around in a circle, and both of those are kind of uh, one away from any card in the middle, and the middle's one from each other, and that's sort of how they're connected. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to go off to find these items to lie about where you've been and to try to score some points. For example, if you could get two cards that have to pertain with Africa, you can then go tell about it and score some points. And notice that these points go range from one to four. I'll show you how this works later. As for Mount Everest, we need three cards and China, we need four cards that say China. And of course, as you go up, the points get larger. You could also go for even the more difficult spots that need five or all six cards there because there's only six different areas that you can go to to get those cards. So this means you need one from every one of those. But look at the points range from eight to 14 there, but you need six cards. South Pole, you need five unique cards. So let's say on my turn, I go to the junk shop and I get to pick one of these cards if I want. Now, when you take one of these, notice it's got the, the green junk shop uh, uh, color on there. And notice that each of these in order are the different places. For example, those gold places I told you, Africa, has this symbol. And so in order from top to bottom, easiest to, to hardest, shows you that this is worth one point if it's for Africa, three points it's for China. And this one is one point for uh, Mount Everest, two if it goes to the South Pole, and one for the Amazon. So it shows you which, which ones could be possibly lied about and about in one of those different areas thematically. Now, one of the coolest things always about uh, the cheap ass games is the flavor text and the theme of this. So look at this, a plum duck sauce. Leave it to the mysterious Asian people to prefer, perfect a mean of to make a duck taste even better than it naturally would. Or a fossilized fern. This rock bearing of a fossilized leaf comes from a sacred burial place in the heart of the wilderness. Those who rob it are said to be smitten with a hereditary lisp. They're usually funny, interesting things that, that are on the cards there. So I could take one of these. Let's say I just take this one. That would be the end of my turn. Now we each started with the cards secretly actually. So now I actually have two and you keep these secret from everybody. So I actually have this right there. Now there always needs to be eight cards out. And since I took one, we draw one from the draw deck right here. And this card goes into the news section because that's the color and the icon that it goes into. So it would go over here with the other cards that are in the newsstand. Now there's actually three of them there. Now there is a, uh, some of these cards uh, will have an actual number on them. 
and this says seven. Now what this means is if any card comes up when it's being drawn and it has a number equal or greater to the number of players that are, that are there, um, Professor Elemental will move clockwise one spot. Now I know the game only plays to six players, but they have these numbers up to eight because you actually can play it up to eight, but it's really just recommended for up to six. Anyway, players that, uh, um, Professor Elemental will move clockwise one spot. He always moves clockwise. Now what does that mean? Well, if, let's just say it was later in the game and I was here, if uh, Professor Elemental went here, I would, essentially, Professor Elemental is the person who started this whole scheme about going off just around London, finding all these cool things, bringing them back, and saying he went everywhere. Now we're doing it, and he's catching us doing what he started, and he doesn't like it. So we get a penalty when he comes over here because he doesn't like us stealing his shtick. And so what happens if he lands where you are? You either have to discard one of your cards from your hand, or lose one point for each card in your hand. So all you gotta get rid of one of these cards would be minus two. And you just keep track on a pencil and paper. So it's pretty simple. On your turn, you're just moving one uh, up to one spot if you want to. You can grab something if you want to. If you go to the market, you essentially put one card in the bottom of this pile. You're basically are discarding it, and you draw another one blindly. Uh, and when you have enough to commit, uh, complete a story, you go to the Adventure Club on your turn, and you, when you go there, you must... Uh, turn in an adventure and tell us about it. So let's see what that might look like. So let's say I went to the adventure club on my turn. I'm turning in a, a story or an adventure. Now I'm going to China. This tells me I need at least four cards. And whenever you turn an adventure, they have to be unique cards. When I say unique, unique types. So if you can look at the, the logos or the colors here, you can see that you can't have more than one photograph card, for example. So all four of these come from different areas, different types of things that go to your story. And they all have to have points saying that they're worth something. They actually match with China. So in this case, this is legitimate. I have at least four cards. They're all different um, and they all have points for China. So I would get two, four, six, eight, and I would get six bonus points because this card is like this. Now, the interesting part about this game is really the storytelling aspect. So let me show you what a adventure really looks like when you read through it. We got a photograph of Mr. Parker swimming. Mr. Parker is not, no is not known to rip off his undergarments and plunge into a leech infested lake unless it's particularly hot or unless he has eaten 15 brandy beets. <laughs> Oh, a nice antidote. Caught trousers free in an open country. We were pr pursued by a dapper short-armed dragon, and then we took shelter in a rubbish tip until nightfall. Well, we have a fact that rats are tasty. There's boiled rat, fried rat, rat in a stick, rat sausage and spam, rat creole, rat kebabs, three rat soup, rat cooked like duck, rat cooked like rat, and pumpkin rat pie. <laughs> These things are hilarious. Miniature tree. A tree this, uh, this small could only be a product of harsh environment, such as one might find atop the world's tallest mountains in the entry of Japanese farmhouse. So you would read that off, everybody would laugh, and you would get those points. We would then move uh, Professor Elemental one way clockwise. Ooh, if there's someone there, you get the same penalty I talked about earlier. We then would reduce this goal by one. So it was worth six. Next person that goes to China is worth four. We then take a die and we randomly have one of the goals go up. This is a die two. So we go with the one with the die two. So Africa goes from three to four. If I had rolled the same place, it doesn't go up. Nothing else will go up. So one thing's gonna go down and usually one thing's gonna go up. Now, if I used all of my cards, meaning the four that I turned in were the only four in my hand, I would then get to draw a card. That's pretty much the game. You're moving or not. You're taking a card and you're trying to get the right amount of stories for the right amount of spots to try to get the points. And depending on the amount of players, once you reach a certain amount of points, you win the game. There's stuff and nonsense. If you've never played cheap ass games before, um, this falls directly into their, their wheelhouse, which is, Create a game that has a lot of theme, a lot of flavor text, funny or cute artwork, things that are gonna make you laugh, things that don't make you think too hard, beer and pretzels type level where you can play it very casually, but still, you know, you kinda gotta pay attention. You've got some strategy going on, but it's pretty light. Um, and this fits that niche. Uh, you know, you're trying to figure out where do I go? What am I going to go for? Which goals are going up and down right now? Uh, which thing am I going to try to do? Should I try to trade this in earlier for a smaller goal? Or should I try to just go for the big bananas and go to the Amazon? Uh, but I got to watch out for Professor Elemental. I don't want to be clockwise from him. I want to be away from him. Should I go try to the market and go trade? So there are some decisions to be made. And they're not anguishing. They're light. But they're good decisions to make. The thing with this game, though, is if you're going to play this game seriously and you're gonna really be thinking about okay i can go here i'm gonna go over there i'm gonna go there i'm gonna go there i'm gonna throw some cards down i'm gonna collect some points and i'm gonna keep going and see if i win 
if that's the way you want to play games and that's the way you want to play this game, don't play it. Because that's really not what this game is about. This game is actually kind of like a storytelling game. A little bit. Because the real fun in this game is actually reading all the flavor text in this card. I reviewed a game last year from them called uh, uh, Get Lucky. And it was a card game based off of Dr. Lucky. And you can play that game for points too. And you can play without the flavor text and it's fine. But when you read all the flavor text, Cheap Ass Games is just great about drowning you with with theme and drowning you with some funny, witty things written there. Sure, if you play the game a million times, it might get a little old, but it's it's just funny. And when you see new people read that stuff, it will bring back the, the element of, of, of laughter there. So in this game, it really, if you wanna play, play it as a light thematic game, beer and pretzels, I'm going here, I'm going there, got some things to think about, but they're not too hard. But when I turn on the adventure, I'm gonna read my story and people are gonna laugh, then this is one that you're probably gonna enjoy. It's quick, it's fun. The story's the best part, but there are some good decisions to make. Don't 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 think there's there aren't any. There are, but they're light. Um, and overall, if you gonna if you really want to just enjoy the ride and watch other people's ride and laugh a little bit, then stuff and nonsense might be for you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.